it's an ADC who is squishy yeah. and you can chunk. Um, and I think it was maybe down to Misfortune just trying to play how she was doing, but just play behind the minions. Yeah, well, now turning to the second scheduled 1v1, Edward is going to be stepping onto the Howling Abyss, Abyss versus Naru. Okay. So this could be a little bit more of a test as Edward is going to make his way out. You can see him and Naru there looking very confident, especially, I mean, this is the guy that had absolutely no confidence in his jungler. He's now happy to take him down. Phew, this is just such a good start for Turkey, knowing that, you know, their wild card that they threw out first has taken the victory. And now they've tossed out Naru, who is, you could say the Turkish faker of the lineup and the indeed prodigy. the region. That's what everyone's calling him. And now he's against Edward, who, I'm not sure how we'll cope in this 1v1. I mean, like, Nash yeah. used to those 2v2s. Naru, mechanically adept. Um, is Edward another meat shield? Is Naru the playmaker of the team, the ace of the team, just to get another one in the bag? And then it'll be 2-0 to a point where they just need one more. Like, anyone can just throw, like, a cheese pick, do a carbon, toss out a Teemo, and then just pick up a kill. Yeah, and if we're looking back to sort of Edward's playstyle, I mean, this guy's been throwing spanners in the works for basically his whole career. So we could expect all sorts of crazy things to come out from this guy. I'm 100% expecting cheese of some sort. <laughs> uh, I mean, he brought up the Tarek before it was mm. cool. Like, we will see something. And because of just how the meta is currently, it could be literally anything. There was some talks of uh, junglers playing Ivan in these 1v1s and trying to make the bushes work. I think it's terrible. But he might do something like that and surprise us, just like the Tam Kench that we just saw. Well, I certainly hope so. LeBlanc, Cassiope, and Draven has uh, been banned away here by Edward. LCD, so certainly doesn't like a certain array of screens, which is great to see. Caitlyn, Ez Caitlyn Ezreal, and Kennen to be taken off the board by Naru. Not Caitlyn, off she's a bit of any big fun, really, which is uh, a bit sad. And Naru's just gonna flat out lock in the time catch as well. No fear, this is a strategy they've all been practicing. They know, get to level three. Is this it? Wait until we're all about, almost about to hit that level four. Land a snowball and win the trade. There is nothing they can do. We will always take the victory. And he's done it, he's uh, locked it in and he's expecting that it's just gonna all go like clockwork. Is this the Turkish trump card? <laughs> like, the Tam Kench. I guess they'll keep playing it until it stops working. And if Ice, all they want to do is play ADCs, then they're in a much better position. This time he has Valkyrie, though, so yeah. it's, it's harder to go all in. But if you go three stacks into a stun, so you bait out the Valkyrie, get the stun, or waddle on up to him, <laughs> give him the old gobble, and then just spin him back out for the kill, that's an easy way for Naru to get this one if there's no minions in his way. So Edward has to be very smart about how he plays. Uh, kind of similar to actually Velcon. Fully enough, I was never thinking in my career I would compare Tam Kench to Velkos, but very <laughs> difficult to approach. You want to stay behind your minions, otherwise one lick could spell your doom. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I just love that that's a sentence that we can use yep. in the correct context. Context: One lick could spell your doom. I'm going to have that written on my tombstone, I think. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic information to learn, because Turkey seemed to have found a strategy and they're sticking to it here as Nara is just going to hop back on the Tom Kench, which is interesting given the fact that he's a mid laner. He plays a lot of 1v1 scenarios, you know, in his everyday League of Legends life, has a lot of those skills. Like this guy could have played almost anything and it's the frog that's the decision. I mean, funny you mention it because Faker did play AP Tam Kench for a little bit in solo queue. And I mean, I don't know if it was necessarily good, but it throws people <laughs> off. And he does play yeah. some wacky stuff, like Olaf and Tirarelli is actually a good matchup. He did play that at Worlds. Um, and there is some validity to an AP Tam Kench. So we'll have to see if he, uh, he busts that one out. But it's worked for them so far through a sample size of one. So, I mean, I can't really doubt them. Well, we are going to get straight onto the Howling Abyss here for game number two. Naru versus Edward. Team Ice are going to try and fire back. There's Naru Masterchef Tom Kench this time. It's almost like we're, it's like a, a, a skin showing of Tom Kench at this point. Does he have five? I don't no, think so. unfortunately not. <laughs> Unlucky. That could have well. been the play. Yeah, I understand Tom Kench. I'm a bit sick about that as well. All right, so Edward, he's gone down um, the middle tree because he has the biscuits here. Mm -hmm. So looking to just poke a little bit. I assume he's gotten some knowledge off of his ADC. That is a great skin. <laughs> yeah, the Valkyrie coming out, sorry, uh, the Gatling Gun coming out first, just wanting to clear the wave. Is that actually better wave clear than taking something like the Phosphor? 
Um, I mean, you'll hit like the entire wave unless you're trying to manipulate it. You can't really manipulate the first wave, but uh, you could theoretically hit all of it. In terms of Shred as well, if he's trying to just uh, trade blows with Naru, Naru can't really punish him for using the Valkyrie because he can stay behind his minions. He can just make it difficult. So it does kind of make sense. Um, he's probably gone fast bomb right now. He's not really in danger of getting all in by time catch since he has the level advantage. So he'll go for that Valkyrie level three maybe, um, but learning from the mistakes of his uh, his ADC, then maybe he'll go for a more defensive option, but he uh, he's good. So this is turning out the same way as last game, where you get the shove off as the ADC, takes the tower shot, classic. Uh, and news. then Naru, he's just constantly looking for that snowball opportunity. Actually hasn't picked up the Devour yet either, so got that great health. He's going to nom through it just to keep himself healthy and has the Tongue Lash there already. Still waiting for that magical level three. It's worth mentioning that Edward is out farming his ADC. Uh, it was 9 out of 12, I believe, on the first two <laughs> waves, whereas uh, Edward, I think, maybe even gotten all of them so far. So he's uh, he's already won against his own team. Yeah, this is actually a tryout for a roll swap for Edward at this uh -huh. point in time. So right now feeling pretty good about that one. Is he once again Valkyries this frog? Oh, no, we're not going to find the Tongue Lash. Maybe Edward is thinking he's playing Rumble, because he's playing in the same way, sitting in front of his minions, hitting S, and then allowing the Gatling gun to hit Naru from behind the minions. Um, and he is in a mech, so, you know, it's an easy mistake to make. So. That's a very good point. He's making it work. Um, okay, so by using the Fast Bomb there, you know he's going to go back. He's just burning the mana. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been an efficient trade. So this is fine. He, uh, he got the push off, and Tam Kench is Obviously not faster pushing, so Naru will take the opportunity to go back himself. Yep, have something to eat there as well. Ruby Crystal is going to be his pickup. Double Doran's Blade here for Edward. The only amount that you can purchase, of course, in this 1v1 scenario, and has himself some boots so he can attempt to run away from the frog, who doesn't actually have the boots. Yeah, the boots are really important specifically for the Corky in this matchup, because uh, if you do get licked, you want to get as, uh, away as fast as possible, yep. and also allows you to try and juke that lick a little bit easier. However, walking face oh, first yeah. into the Tam Kench, not so great. Yeah, and he even lands the Snowball as well. Doesn't have the help of the minions just yet, but is going to be able to stack up that passive. Good Exhaust comes out as Edward's trying to get himself to the health back, does so. The Naru is so hungry. Another Tongue Lash comes in, but a little bit too late. Oh, Tam Kench almost claiming another victim in this 1v1. He's so scary. Not how I expected this day to turn out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Edward trying his damnedest. He just needs to play the CS game. Uh, he lost a cannon there, unfortunate. But Naru, now the panic is in Edward's eyes. Uh, he never would have gotten hit before by that Q, but now that he's forced to play behind the minions and he's a little uh, cautious of a Tam Kench who almost 100 0 would him, then he's just playing a bit wobbly. So needs to uh, try and regain control of the, the lane. Uh, but now that the minion wave is in the favor of Tam Kench, he'll have to let this one reset, wait for the next wave to come in, and then regain control after that. Uh, the fact he only had one pop means he is going to be a little chunked. So this is actually precarious for uh, for the Corky. However, the Corky does still have this CS advantage. And could it be that Edward sort of just stays back, tries to farm this one out, and plays that 100 CS game? Is that? in his wheelhouse to do because this Corky is farming better and has the ability to do so throughout this matchup. I'll be honest, Atlas, that's his only play because uh, he's not going <laughs> to kill the Tam Kench because uh, he's, he's Corky. So he might be able to shove in the waves and hit the tower, but it's too risky because we saw exactly what just happened there. Nara ambushes him. Maybe he lands a stray lick, a stray snowball, and he gets in on the Corky, chunks him again. He can't play that game. So the less risk-adverse play is just to try and play the numbers game. He's already ahead. Yes, it has been equalized by that play that Nairo made, so only five in it now, and it should equalize to about four if they both CS perfectly. Uh, but Edwards should still play that game. Well, right now, they're just farming things out. Nairo looking on the offensive. Remember, the onus is on the frog to make the moves. This is the Tongue Lash. Now just going to walk up to Edward. The minion's firing at the Tom Kench, but pretty tanky. Not too worried. Has the gray health. like. Just looking relatively unkillable as he misses that cannon creep. Now just going to walk past these minions, stacking it up now as well as the Tongue Lash comes in. He's looking greedy, looking hungry. But all Naru really needs is to burn the Valkyrie and he gains control of the lane. Snowball is going to come in. He wants that Devour. Can't quite close the distance. The boot's working wonders here for Edward. Just goes back again. 
So because it's uh, unlikely that you're going to just like max out Valkyrie uh, as the Corky here, then Naru can burn the Valkyrie. It's on like a 15, 20 second cooldown and you have control of the next wave. There's nothing that Corky do because if he steps up, gets licked again, Tam Kent walks at you. So by just burning the Valkyrie, he's effectively just won the next 20, 30 seconds and the next minion wave. And that's all he's done. And as a result of that, you can see he's not only evened up the CS, but is about to get ahead. Well, there it is. Only a few minions in this wave as well. Naru will actually be able to take the lead as far as minions killed on this map. Edward's going to be able to clean some of these up, but only gets two out of the three once he makes it back. And the Sapphire Crystal just feels so bad, man. Like, building obviously towards that Sheen, which is so important for a Corky, but the fact that he goes back twice, the first time gets a Sapphire Crystal, second time gets five potions slash biscuits. I mean, it's not a good feeling. It's the only thing he can do, because he's not going to get another component of the Sheen. He'll just go for the, uh, for the mana so he can continue to push out the wave against Naru. Uh, because the way he's going to win this is, of course, as we already mentioned, by farming it out. So the longer he can stay in, la uh, in lane, the better, and gets him towards that goal of the Sheen. Uh, in terms of going for more AP, completely useless, because he's not going to kill the Tam Kench, and he doesn't need it for clearing, but he may have just screwed up. Well, there's the grass for the Undying. He is going to get eaten as Nara is going to pull him all the way back. Valkyrie comes in, but the Snowball has already landed. Good exhaust by Edward. Not going to be able to find it. He's just trying to use his range advantage as best he can. Greyhealth not used yet by Naru. Wants to be able to hold onto it for the regen. Boss Bomb. Oh, actually now going to break it. Remember, the Abyssal Voyage is there. We'll be able to get right back underneath this turret to keep playing that minion game. Naru played the start of that extremely well. Um, he managed to force all of the defensive tools from Edward, managed to hit him a bunch, but Edward, on the return of that, was not only kiting, but also hitting back on Naru, and Naru missing that lick was the important thing there, because that would have forced Edward back, he would have had to go back to base, or back to his tower at least, to get control of that minion wave. However, as it turned out, Edward was able to continuously hit Naru, um, which meant he could force him back to the tower, and because now he's hit the level 6 spike, has those rockets, and had a lot in reserve as he wasn't using them, he was able to get that trade off. Well, Snowball not quite up here for Naru as Edward takes himself the health pack. And that's an exhaust down now for Naru. He was feeling the pressure that the Corky was putting down. Grabs himself a Ruby Crystal. Still can't afford that Sheen. Actually, no, could. There's a, okay, there we are. So he's going to discover that he has enough money for his initial purchase and picks up the package now. Edward, a little bit more movement speed. And I didn't even know that that spawned on the Howling Abyss Pulse. I'm learning things today. Today, I learned. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a Tam Kench Corky matchup before on Howling Abyss, so uh, it's, all, it's all new. But he does have the Sheen, and also has the package. So he essentially has control of this lane for the oh, next couple of minutes. How did he land that? I don't know. Very um, cheeky. The Neo of Tam Kench's. <laughs> <laughs> But Naru has to be a little careful, because this is the spot in the game where Edward could theoretically have uh, kill potential on Naru if he chunks him down to, say, 60%. It's not going to be 100-0, but he has to respect it. Certainly has kill potential on this turret as well as Edward, remember, has the Sheen. So the extra tower damage is an opportunity, they know. As Naru's going to go aggressive, package is going to get laid down. Looks adorable here on this skin as well. Shoutouts. Nara is just going to try and grab brush positioning. Edward gets the mana back from the health bot. Yeah, that's a really good shout. The tower is very low. Uh, I had noticed from the just constant minions crashing against the tower and when Nara is also forced back to base. So this puts the onus on Nara to try and get a play off. Oh, here's the three stacks. He goes in. He has He's to go for this. looking for the dive. Yeah, the consume comes in. Nara is going to have to spit him out as Edward grabs another health pack. But is it going to be enough? I don't think so. Oh. There's the auto and the Tom Kench. Two for nothing. Unreal! He had one shot, one opportunity, and the Tam Kench went in and grabbed it. Absolutely incredible play there, and Tam